gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Alka Mukherjee, Dr. Kshama, Dr. Ashish for giving me a chance to share my experience on this platform. I bring greetings to all of you from MTP Salta Institute of Medical Sciences, Nagpur. Ladies and gentlemen, during the journey of life of an adolescent girl, when she is at the age of 15 years and she has developed all the secondary sexual characters but has not attained manner, she is fraught with anxiety and the parents are fraught with fear as well as anxiety because her future is at stake. We as obstetricians and gynecologists need to find new roles and add colors to life. Friends, with uterine transplants and vaginoplasty, there is always a hope for whether it is vaginal congenesis or whether it is uterine absentia. When we talk about primary amenorrhea, the first most common cause is terminal syndrome. But the second one most important is male occupancy post-processor syndrome, androgen insensitivity syndrome and the list is on. When we talk about vaginal progenesis and MRKH, it is the mo second most common cause of primary amenorrhea, which is seen in about 1 in 4,000 to 5,000 female births. We have three forms, typical, which is seen in 47% of patients, or typical in 21% and 32% of them is associated with MR and URCS. The diagnosis of MRKH is by general examination as well as local examination and some considerations. Normal secondary sexual characters, normal hair growth, on local examination, presence of the vaginal pimple, absence of uterus on PR, and on investigations, ultrasonography and MRI is very important. On ultrasonography, it is very important to see and localize the kidneys. The reason being, our surgical management depends on that. If in a patient of MRKH you have a kidney which is pelvic, we may not be able to go in for a McIndo. We may have to go in for a williams or plastic. The other investigation which is so very important for us is either do a bar body or a chromosomal analysis which will be 46 x things. MRKH, once it is diagnosed, it is very important for us to counsel the patient and the relatives because of the psychosocial adjustment to anomaly, the menstrual function, we have to be very clear and concise that she may not be able to menstruate unless she has a menstrual uterine transplant at a later date. Her marital function, especially the sexual function, we need to talk about by doing a vaginoplasty and we need to stress upon the timing of vaginoplasty. And we all know, when a patient is coming to you in the early age, that's not the time for vaginoplasty. We do a vaginoplasty or create a new vagina when the, lady, when the girl is about to get married, three months prior. Her reproductive function, we need to be very clear to her that she can be a biological mother because she has ovaries though she has absence of the uterus and vagina. She can be a biological mother by the process of cellulose. And most important, when we are going to create a new vagina, we have to stress upon her that her quality of life will be good provided she goes in for intermittent dilatation throughout her life which she might need and she should be ready for that. So friends, Whenever we are planning for a surgical management, it is to create a functional neovagina for sexual intercourse. What is vaginoplasty? It is a genitoplasty where a potential space is created which is rectovesicle of adequate length, width and most importantly aesthetically accepted for penetrative sexual intercourse. There are various ways of creating a neovagina. Non-surgical and surgical. When we talk of non-surgical, it is the Frank's graduated heart glass, uh, heart glass dilators which came into being first and now later which were modified by engrams. 
where they, they were already fixed to a bicycle. ACOG endorsed this. But when this is not helping, we have to go in for a surgical correction. And most of the times, the girls or the parents always opt for a surgical correction. Vaginoplasty was given to this world by Columbus in 15th century. Later, Dupitrons used tampons to keep the neo vagina patent. Abbas was one who used a split thickness thin graft. And it was Abbe Wharton McIntyre in 1938 first used balsa mold to keep it patent. Sir Archibald McIntyre in England was the first one to use split thickness skin graft. And whenever we do a McIntyre's, we say it is Abbe McIntyre weed vagina plus. There has been evolution of vagina. First, there were hard molds which were made up of dentine, they were solid, they were heavy, and now what we use are soft molds made up of rubber foam. There are so many surgeries that are available to start with. There are so many. We have Vichetti, we have Devido, which has come up, and yesterday we saw a very wonderful uh, surgical intervention, and we have Nightingale, which is kind of best. To keep the vagina patent, the mold needs to be covered with something. And what are the various things that we need that we can use? A sigmoid column, thigh flaps, facio-cutaneous flaps, gracilis flap, labia majora, peritoneum, amnion, and the list is on. What we have seen are the skin grafts, the amnion grafts. But what's new? Interseed. Interseed and absorbable adhesion material, which many of you must be using for patients with uh, fibroid or endometriosis and so on. Artificial dermis has come up and recombinant fibroblast growth factor. And friends, let me tell you, the search is still on to get more and more. What is intercy? It is an innovative surgical approach for vaginal virginesis. It's a fabric, oxidized, regenerated cellulose and absorbable adhesive barrier which leads to spanocephalization of the neo vagina within a span of three months. And this is the important thing. Now, whenever we plan for a vaginoplasty, what are the various steps that we're going for? Preparation of a soft mold, hydrodissection, incision on the vaginal dimple, creation of a rectovesical space, soft mold insertion, decompression so that the form takes the form of the neo vagina and tight cross trapping so that the mold remains passing to the skin. So when we see for the steps, the most important is what are the components of the trolley? A malicot scatter, rubber foam, Intercy and how do we prepare a soft form? A rubber foam of about 10 cm length is wound around the malicot scatter so that we get a width of about 3.5 to 4 cm. It is attached to a suction machine and so that it decompresses. Why it is important to see that? Because when you are forming a neo vagina and when you are going to insert it, as you release the compression, it's going to take the form of the neo vagina. So this is how a soft mold, the uh, foam is covered with condom and the thread is tied at the base. We use intercede, this adhesive barrier. This adhesive barrier then covers the form or the soft mold that we have formed with the use of a rubber foam, which is covered with the condom and which is tied at the base. We take interrupted sutures so that we are able to cover the whole of the soft foam with the industry. As far as the procedure is concerned, after taking the labial stitches, the bladder is catheterized and you need to see what is the length of vagina that is available. After that, we go in for hydrodissection with saline along with one in finding the of saline one ampule of hydrodissection. Now what is the importance of hydrodissection? Uh, 
frankly speaking, there is absolutely no space. This space opens up and that helps in creation of a new vagina. So we are now seeing as to how what is the length of the vagina. That helps us in deciding where our incision is going to be. This is a cruciate incision or an any sort of an incision can be given. But our incision should always be away from the urethra and posteriorly from the urethra. So we are giving a cruciate incision here. In the dimple that we feel, it is very important for us to feel this dimple because the moment you feel this dimple, you are going to go into that particular space. Now, once this cruciate incision is given, you put your finger in the direction posterior inferiorly because that's the physiological direction of vagina. So we go always posterior inferiorly for about 10 centimeters till you feel the peritoneum. And then you have to go on increasing the size, especially in patients who are very small stature. This is a challenge because really the anterior posterior space is very less. And once this uh, space is created and hemostasis is ascertained, the soft mold that we have formed is then inserted into the vagina by the papery movements or the way how it goes. And once the soft mold is inserted, the extra amount of Halibut's catheter is cut. Now to prevent injury to the posterior rectum, but, uh, the assistant can always keep a hand in the rectum. And this is kept in the vagina for a span of 8 days with antibiotics to the patient and form is removed after 8 days. And the whole of the uh, intercene is taken up well and this is how a new vagina would look. Now after the new vagina has been formed, it needs to be kept patent and we use the PVC made mold which is to be taught to the patient that she has to put inside to keep the new vagina patent. The whole of the vagina needs to be kept patent so that it goes right up to the peritoneum in what we have created the new vagina. It can be fastened well and she can use this because it is very light, it is made up of PVC and she can very easily use it. Every time she goes to the washroom, she has to clean it. So these are the two pictures of the post-operative uh, on the state day how the new vagina looks like, the catheter is removed then. And after a span of six months, you can wonderfully see how the epithelization has taken place. Now, as I was telling you, what are the challenges that we face? Small stature, the space is very small and then we have to go more laterally. Because what we need to have is at least two and a half finger breadth size of the vagina. Counseling post-operatively is very important because we need to impress upon the patient and if possible if the spouse is with the patient, we need to convince them that the, the couple has to have abstinence for a span of three to six months and with intermittent dilatation later they can be together. The use of mold for intermittent dilatation, dilatation should be stressed upon and the most important thing is follow-up. Follow-up is important because we need to know how has been the anatomical outcome and the functional outcome in the later part of their life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our experience of having McIntyre vaginoplasty at NTP Over a period of say 5 years, we had about 22 patients. We did McIntyre vaginoplasty within 9 patients. We used intercede in 12 and we did one with J. But let me be very sincerely tell you that when we did a VJ, the, the patient had a VBA. And this is because of the, uh, the, the small uh, thing that presses in between the urethra and the rectum and the direction of that uh, pebble should be such that it should be proper otherwise it can lead to a VBA. And we really need to see for the anatomical and the functional outcome. 
As far as the duration of surgery is concerned, if we happen to compare, it takes 32 minutes roughly if we use intercede for the surgery. Whereas when we use squid thickness skin graft, we require the help of the plastic surgeon and it takes a longer time. The complications in the form of discharge post-operative or painful insertion of mold is concerned, it was quite low with intercede as compared to squid squid thickness skin graft. And uh, when we were doing hydro dissection, one girl had hypotension and ventricular tachycardia during the process because of the use of adrenaline. And in the, this patient, then we resorted to only use of saline for hydro dissection. None of the girls undergoing vaginoplasty had any fistulas. As far as skin graft is concerned, some contractures, coloration, presence of hair in the vaginal graft tissue, poor cosmetic appearance, time and help of plastic surgeon is so very important. As far as anatomical outcome is concerned, if you happen to compare the length of vagina, it is almost the same except for some amount of extra length that we got with intercity and functional outcome. See, it is very important for us to follow these patients and talk to them in the later part of life as to how are they doing. When we talked to the patients and the patient's husband, we found that the, se the sexual satisfaction in the form of lubrication, satisfaction, dyspareunia was less with intercede as compared to split thickness skin graft. Vaginoplasty, why are you doing it? This is an era of super specialities and there is so much of overlap. But friends, vaginal surgery is our day. Knowledge of anatomy, we are good at. So why we should not be keeping vaginoplasty in our armamentum our, our, our is my question. And what has been the social impact? We talk of women empowerment. We talk of economical independence. This is true when the girl is from higher socioeconomic state. But vaginoplasty for a girl from low socioeconomic state is really a life-changing intervention. We are giving a home to her. We are giving dignity of life. And what is most important is surgeon satisfaction. Because it is proportionately, proportionate to the positive change that we have in patient's life. And this is immense. So, to sum up, a sound knowledge of surgical anatomy is of paramount importance. A thorough counseling concerning sexuality, Social and financial self-sufficiency is to be needed. Good surgical technique and hemostasis is the cornerstone. Post-operative psychological support is so very important. And using intercede for vaginoplasty, the gynecologist is independent. No separate procedure is required for a graft. It is safe. It is easy. Effective. Less time consuming and the patient satisfaction with anatomical and functional outcome is good. Hence, I think it is a potential alternative for vaginal emergencies. We need to give colors to the life of these girls. Thank you so much.